In the new version of Datagraph 4.2, we can create these interactive graphics where when you drag a certain element on the graph itself, you can have that value linked to other items in your graph. For example, here I have the location of this arrowhead is being used to change the colors in this graph as well as the colors that are in this bar graph down below. It is also being used to change where the split is occurring between in this data set between these two box plots. In this video, I'll demonstrate for you how to create one of these arrows where the value of the location of the arrow is being extracted, as well as a line connecting to that and change the color scheme dependent on that location. To demonstrate this, let me go ahead and just create a new graphic and drag this around. Let me show you my data set. I have data here for Old Faithful Geyser, and I have data on eruptions in both minutes and, uh, sorry, eruption in minutes as well as waiting time in minutes. If I highlight both of these columns, hit the points command, I can see this points distribution here. So this is the same data that you see being plotted in this graphic. And in my new one, I'll go ahead and add a label command. And in order to create this interactivity, I'm going to extract the location of the arrow back into a global variable. And I'll go ahead and just move this to its own spot. To do this, uh, there's two different ways. You can go over to the list of global variables Use the other drop down menu to select number from command. This will create for you a blank uh, command, and then you use the drop down menu to select which graph and what command within that graph you want to select a value from. For example, for all the graphs in my file, they're all listed and it shows you all the different commands that have extractable values. What's new is the ability to extract uh, the axis itself is a new thing to extract, but what I'm going to extract here is the location of my label and I want the x value and we'll call this my new x. Now when I move the location of my arrow, you see it changes the value of this variable, and then I can use that in other commands. For example, I'll go ahead and create a lines command, and I want the location of this line to be the same as my arrow. So I'm going to type in here new x, since this accepts variables as its input. And sure enough, now when I move my arrow back and forth, I also move around that line. The second way to create a global variable that's extracting from a command such as the label command here is to do it from the command itself. So say, for example, I click on the gear menu on the right hand side of the command that brings up an extract as variable menu and you can select the variables that are available. Here you have the X value, which you can see it creates basically the same thing that we did before when we created it by using the number from command entry in the dropdown menu above. I'll go ahead and just delete that value. Now what I'd like to do is to create a color scheme that's dependent on this value new X. We can create the color scheme also in the global variables column. So we go to other color scheme and we're going to have two different colors and we're going to have the colors be dependent upon a range of values. So for example, here we can say when the value is in between some A and B, where the A and B values are going to be from zero to my variable new X. And the second range is going to include new X. So it's from a bracket to the parentheses. And we'll do this up to the value of 10. Oops, it's red since I typed that in incorrectly. So there it is. The variable is called new X. And the two colors I'm going to pick here, we'll just go ahead and leave the red and pick a shade of blue. 
To use this color scheme, I go back to my command list, open up the detail view in my points command. This gives me several different options for attributes that I can tie to my global variable. For example, my fill, I can say I would like that to depend on the column called eruptions and use the scheme that I simply called colors. So here you see now everything that's below the value for new x is colored red and everything above the value is colored blue. And if I move this around, then it also changes those values. I can change the label that's located on this arrow to also reflect the value of this variable. You do that by clicking to the right of where the label entry is located and you can click, actually you can select the global variable but this also allows you to select just the x value itself for that label. You can see here 2.963 is the same as what we see here, 2.963. And again, as I move this back and forth, that value changes, and so do the colors. If you'd like to dig into this file and see how all of these connections are created, then the file is available on the Datagraph website on the data blog, for the entry for February 1st, 2017. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, contact us at help at visualdatatools.com.